Well, hello there. My name is Vinay, and we are finally back on YouTube with some fresh new content. Today's setup is basically GH5, OnePlus 7, monitor. So you guys will be having these three views. And what are we doing today exactly? Well, we are basically going to be doing something you have been asking so patiently, uh, so nicely for a very long time. And I being uh, <laughs> the kind of person that I am, very, very horrible with my time management. I've been playing this. YouTube and me sort of haven't had that affection relationship yet. So we're getting there. We're figuring things out. And whilst we figure it out, here's me recording a YouTube video on editing. This is how I edit an image from scratch to the end. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. As you can see, this is my wallpaper. Beautiful, right? Let me know if you guys want it. I'll send it to you. Just DM me. <laughs> Anyways, let's get started. So, this is a set of images which I haven't uploaded on um, Instagram yet. This is something we're going to edit together. So, I thought I'm anyways going to be editing these. Might as well just record a video and show you guys how I go about editing such images. So, we all are on the same page, sort of. Uh, because a lot of you have been asking me how I grade my images and stuff since a very long time. And I have basically not been able to uh, give you a proper video on that. This is my gift to y'all for Diwali. <laughs> Happy Diwali, by the way, in advance. So, uh, this is my friend. She's Natasha Bhardwaj. You can also follow her on Instagram. This is her Instagram handle right here, right now. Before I start an edit, there are three things that I always do, and I think you should do. Very simple psychological things. Uh, not even psychological, just human procedural things. And those are observation, execution, and validation. What the hell does this mean? <laughs> just fancy ass words I made up? Sort of, yeah. I did make them up. This is not a any any sort of rule in photography. This is something that I have done and built as my procedure and my way and my process of editing an image. So the first thing is observation. Observe. This is the raw image from uh, the Fuji X100F. Observation basically means what is wrong with the image? What do I need to change? Ask yourself these questions. Observe the image and see if you can give yourself some sort of answer to that question. So I feel that of course uh, there's a little bright area going on right below the head. I would want to of course make that a little softer. Uh, the skin's right now in a brown region. Uh, I would probably make that a little towards yellow eventually. Uh, the hair is a little too shiny, too glossy. So I am going to definitely try and reduce the contrast and clarity to make that less sharp but still show a sort of light coming through there. And uh, overall, of course, I'm going to drop the contrast of this because I'm going to do a sort of vintage edit on it. And now the background, I like the yellow, but we're going to move to a little bit of a warm green sort of look. So, you know what? Let's just start. That's my observation. That's what I feel I want to change. So now I have a sort of direction I want to go to. So let's try and take a direction and let's see what we can do. Now, the first few steps that I do are basically um, some in parametric not a lot in parametric in parametric i'll basically shift the highlights down right now because i want to anyways reduce that this is the basic observational thing that i will ever shift i won't try to edit the image right now in the first panel i'm going to go to curves so let's move around the rgb curve let's see what we're going to do with it i don't want to add contrast i want to sort of kill contrast in that one we will just add the slightly less now we have an overall slightly flatter look on the image. As you can see, the contrast is sort of gone, right? So I like that because it'll sort of blend the skin area. So as you can see the skin area, the dark parts are getting quite dark. And then the overtones, midtones, and dark tones is having a bit of a leveling issue. So now if I just reduce the contrast entirely, it's going to blend better. So that's what I'm going to do over here so far. I might just add a bit of fade. Let me see. Do I want fade? Yeah, actually, I'll add a bit of fade. But because as you can see in the hair region, the fade is actually adding a layer of black. 
like it's basically crushing the shadows over there. So basically I can use the red, green and blue curve later on and basically add a little bit of color in the hair, in the shadows if I want to. So let's just keep that as it is over there right now. Now let's see what we want to do. We'll shift the white balance a bit. I think we can go a little warm and green. Okay, so by doing that, I've basically made the image a little warmer and I've added a bit of tinge of green. The way that I wanted to go anyways, I wanted to add a warm green tinge on that back color. So if we just do a back and forth, you can see the background has this slightly more colorist orange green going on and all the colors, as you can see right now, if we go to before, the model skin is brighter than the color that's coming on the skin. But now with the edit, the color is brighter than the model skin. So we have a little bit more color play that's going to be going on right now. So cool. Let's go to RGB curves and let's see what we want to do. Now we have red, green and blue curves. <clears throat> I feel the image is too yellow right now. So I'm going to go to blue first and I hope you guys know what red, green and blue curves do. When I'm in the blue curve, if I increase the curve, it's going to make it more blue. If I reduce it, it's going to make it more yellow. So if I can observe there's too much yellow, I'll go to blue and I'll increase blue. So that will basically reduce the yellow. Just to neutralize it a bit. Okay. I'm going to perhaps keep it that way. Now I've increased the blue in the dark parts as you can see. It's because adding this nice blue color fill to the hair and because I've already increased the, I've crushed the blacks on the hair. So now when I add blue in the dark region, there's going to be some blue coming up in the hair as well. And I sort of actually am liking that. So let's see if you want to fill more of it. No, we don't want it. Now the image has become whatever it is. Now we're going to add some green because I absolutely want to add more green to this. As you can see, my, my sort of editing is very trial and error. I don't know exactly what the hell's going to happen. But I sort of know that I want to do something to the image. And I just move it on both sides of the spectrum to see how it's looking. So sometimes you just come across really, really cool colors, really, really interesting base. So this is a very interesting, interesting way to do that. Huh? So there you go. So now I've added this nice green-ish uh, highlights, overtones. Change added a bit of green in the overtones, bad a bit of green in the undertones. Now the image has come that. Let's go and do a very quick before and after to see if you're going in the right direction and the direction that we want. Yellow, warm, cool, looks nice, very sharp, very stocky. Now we added this green, very sort of uh, a swampy feel to this. I kind of like that because Lara Croft runs around in jungles, so we're gonna keep that idea still afloat that she is Lara Croft even though she may not be. Anyways, now let's add some red. Let's see how that, the reds will basically help us get us the warmth back in the image and we need that. So we're gonna add some red. That probably just pushed it over the edge. I'm not really liking that. So I'm just gonna go all, uh, control and delete that random point over there. You want some warmth in the skin and let's do a back and forth. There you go. I like this. It's a low contrast look um, and uh, we have sort of uh, made the background a little bit of green. We will of course tweak that again in HSL and we'll get the orange out of it and we'll get some more green out of it, whatever it is. We'll see how that goes. But so far I am happy with what we have right now. Let's go back to the main parametric curves and let's try and change a few things. Absolute low contrast, I can, then I'll reduce the shadows. That will leave me just with magenta, so I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna keep a little bit of contrast happening. I'm gonna perhaps adjust the blacks a bit. I don't want the whites to pop out that much, so I'm gonna just drop the whites a little. I'm gonna, so increasing clarity will really mess up the hair, but it gives this nice grungy cartoony vibe, which I kind of like, but I'm not gonna do it. I'm not a very high clarity person ever in my life. So I'm just gonna keep it like a very mid tier, maybe a little bit more clarity, but not a lot more. This is just help accentuate a few of the features and give it a lot more outdoorsy feel sort of. 
Now, vibrance we can increase, it'll help us push the colors out a bit and we can keep this degree saturation maybe just a bit, maybe just a bit. Now let's go and see the before and after of the actual raw image to what we have now. Looks interesting, so we have lowered the contrast. Let's see the direction, the observations that we had and how we executed them. The observation that we had was the image is a bit too bright uh, in the chest area. So we want to kind of change that. Uh, we want the background to go to a bit more orange, greenish sort of. Uh, sort of lower down the contrast so the, the shadow detail on the arm and around the skin area basically is a lot more contoured, like it's more balanced and it's more uh, blended in. So let's see if our edit has done that so far. Okay, we've reduced the, uh, uh, the, the the highlights that were there right under the face, those are gone. The contrast is a little less, so now our arm highlight blends a little nicer. And then we have this green uh, thing going on in the background. It's still not the color that I want because we'll still reach there, give us some time. This is just the first step. So there you go. That was your observation and that was your execution. You observe what the hell to be do. You observe what the hell needs to be done and then you executed it. So, good job. Now, let's move on to the next set of edits. After RGB, we're gonna go to HSL. So HSL will basically help us control the exact hue we want on the skin. I wanted it to be a bit more yellow, so let's see if that looks better. Um, the exact hue on the background and uh, yeah, that's basically the two colors that we want to do and we want to adjust, play around with. So, let's adjust the hue on the skin area. Not very impressed with that, but the background we can change a bit. So let's get it a bit more warmer. Does it look nicer? Sometimes I just zoom out of the image just to see how the color is actually affecting. So that warm touch actually looks a bit nicer than the, than the, than the previous one. So we're going to keep the warm touch. We're going to go to luminance. We're going to brighten up the skin just a little bit. We're going to just push up the luminance of the background maybe a little bit. So, as we can see, the greens are right now on her top. So we can make that brighter or darker. I think we can make it a little darker over there. Uh, we have no blues in the image anywhere. We have no cyans, we have no magenta, and we have no uh, purples and magentas. Reds will always work on the lips. Saturation, let's see what we can do with saturation. Do we want to make it more saturated? Uh, perhaps no. We'll keep it just a bit of saturation. The background can be a little desaturated. So we have this so far. All right. Let's take a zoom out look on it. That's how we have edited right now. And that's what it was before. So I like the way it's going. It's a bit less contrast. It's less starky. And we have an edit working out. It's got a bit of a magenta touch to it right now, which I think we will hopefully try and correct in a little bit. So let's go to split toning and let's add some colors here. For now, let's keep it there. I'm not too happy with it, but let's see what happens. Okay, I'm gonna see if it worked. I don't know what I did just now. But I want to see if it looks good. So this is what it was and this is what we did to it in split toning. We have basically lost the reds in the image and we've added blues over there. So am I happy about it? Am I happy about it? I'm not too sure. I do like the image to be a little red. The blue is killing the vibe. So what we did in split toning, we're gonna basically undo it. It's not working. So. It's okay, no problem. Sometimes you try something, it doesn't work. It's cool. Let's go to camera calibration. Let's see what we can do over here. Nope, don't want to change that color. This will make it too yellow. This will get us back some skin tone and it'll have some magenta flare going. This I can do. So we can adjust the greens a bit. And then let's try and change the blues. The blues! In camera calibration always have the most drastic changes so they can basically make your image from whatever to what the hell so uh, just work on them a little more carefully see if it's the right direction you want to go to but the good thing is blue saturation basically 
adds really nice vibrance throughout the rest of the image. So if I take all the way down, it'll tone the vibrance down very nicely. And if I add it all the way up, it'll tone it up really nicely. So blue saturation is always a very interesting thing to always tweak. So I always do blue saturation tweaks. So there we have it. We have this so far and I think I like it. I might just add a bit more contrast in. This adds a lot more contrast. I still want it to be a little bit more flat. I like that look of the image. Okay. I will keep the clarity as it makes it look a little nicer. And of course, now I'm going to add my favorite thing in the world, some grains, good old grains. Now, the three ways you can do this. This is what I call a V-shape formation of grains. As you can see, it's V. It's a V. There's also another way you can do it. You can make it a diagonal. This also looks really nice. So sometimes I use this, sometimes I use the other one. So you can try either way. Either of them look really good. So sure shot, like you without blindly, you can just do that and it'll work. So yeah. So let's put it that way. This looks great. Now we're gonna add a, a Instagram shit crop on it, four by five. And there you have it. This is our image. How does that look? We have basically made the shadows, uh, what I'm saying, we basically made the background a bit more orange green, sort of. We have lowered down its brightness to make the subject pop a little bit. Um, we have lowered down the brightness of the skin area on her. We have brought out the yellow and the orange in the lighting. That's the hair light kicker from the left. We have also added this magenta to the skin with the brown, which makes it look nice. It blends really well and has good color with whatever is going on so let's do a before and after this is before and this is after and there you have it that's how you edit an image that's how at least I edit an image from start to stretch now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically take a break I am going to take a break and that is the third step there is observation execution validation right observation we observed Execution will be executed all the commands and things. Now we're going to take a break. Before you validate your preset, take a break. And let's see what that gets us. So before I actually take the break, I'm just going to save this preset just in case my computer crashes or the world comes crumbling down. At least I would have saved the preset. So let me do that. It's Fuji Vintage, Fuji Vintage 36. I've basically made a shit ton of presets and I'll tell you how I go about making them and why I do I have so many presets in another video so for this one i've just made fuji vintage 36 that should keep you nice in suspense what are all the other 35 <laughs> saved all right now i'm gonna take a break and i'm legit gonna take a break so i'll see you guys in some time bye all right so i'm back from my break and uh, it's very important to take a break because if you keep looking at an edit on the image, you'll be like, this looks good. But unless and until you take a break and you don't get back and then see it fresh again, it just doesn't work the same way. So now we're gonna open the image again. I had closed the window. Now we're gonna open it again and we're gonna see what it looks like and what we can change about it. Okay. Mm. Still looks good. I think uh, the greens are affecting the sharpness a bit. So I'm just going to tweak the sharpness a little higher. So the image still has a little bit of sharpness on it. I would still probably want to go and play on the tone curves a bit because uh, there's a bit of discoloration of the edges, which I am not liking. I would like to at least add some sort of color over there. Maybe in red or whatever. Let's see. Red's not the right way to go. Let's take that back. Let's probably try green. More green, more magenta. If we add more green, it basically flattens out the image a bit. Magenta makes it a bit more contrasted. So let's keep that going. But we're gonna change that. For sure, we're gonna change that. Do you wanna add a bit more yellow into it? Keep the blue. I like the blue. Okay, so we're gonna go to green and change the 
fades to a bit more green that will add some more color on the hair that will basically add color over here and a little bit of green just contrasting to the magenta in the hair so uh, it will add more darkness and depth which I like and uh, let's see where we are at we want to reduce the sharpness the shadows just the exposure a bit okay now because we had saved the preset let's go back and let's see Fuji Vintage 36 now we're going to put 36 and go back and forth on it so back forth little less sharpness on this one magentas are still there little more sharpness on the new one and the discoloration that it feels like it's a bit more black and white on the corners is now making it feel like it's a bit more fuller in color in yellow so there you have it came back after the break we did the same thing again observed what could be changed what could be made better we executed and now you can validate that it works so there you go if there's any few things that you'd like to change then you could basically use like a spot healing brush maybe remove a few things that are a bit distracting on the arm and then we can just let that go there you go now you're done that's basically how i edit the image it's all done in camera raw i don't want to go to photoshop and tweak this any further this is basically how i want it to be and uh, yeah but before we finally validate this edit let's save it as another version of fuji vintage 3601 so before we finally validate this edit I want to test it out on one of the other images in the set that has a little bit of a different lighting on it, maybe a little more shadow because this has a lot more, this is basically lit strongly by the key light. Uh, let's find another image on the set that's basically not that well lit by the key light and has a bit more drama in the shadows. And let's see if this edit works on that. Okay, so we have this. This is how Vintage 3601 looks on this image that we just made now if i look at it starkly because there's a lot more shadow in this the magenta is really popping out and now the clarity is hurting my eyes because there's a lot more hair here so let's see if we can change any of that first of all let's reduce the clarity and make the image a little more softer so that the hair doesn't hurt my eyes as badly let's see if we can reduce the contrast a bit we're going to reduce the contrast a bit and perhaps add a bit more highlight detail to just like you know um, so now reduce the overall contrast we've increased the highlights slightly to still give that isolation and that contrast on the skin and the luminance we're gonna perhaps push the shadows a little bit I want to curb that magenta so I'm gonna go to split toning that we initially cancelled out and just in the shadows we're gonna add a color now let's maybe go for a yellow green towards the green no let's keep it towards the yellow only curb that magenta entirely okay so we have so far all right we're gonna push the slider more towards the lighter side so the effect is very bare minimum as you can see this is the difference that we have you can see just the magenta is being killed and we're back to a bit more yellow tone throughout the image so the magenta is still there in the hair but it's being killed just ever so slightly. Now we're gonna save this as Fuji Vintage 3602. There you go. Now we have Fuji Vintage 3602 and we are gonna go back to the first image that we edited and see how this looks on that. So we had Fuji Vintage 36 Fuji Vintage 3601 Fuji Vintage 3602 There you go, looks nice But just for safekeeping, I actually like the clarity that we're getting with Fuji Vintage 3601 So I'm gonna keep that clarity uh, Because it's making it too soft So just for a few images where I feel it looks good I'm just gonna keep the clarity a little higher And for the others, I'm gonna keep the clarity a little lower so now we have a preset that works throughout the range of photographs that we have, hopefully, because I've only tested it around two. But that gives us a good idea because we have one image with more shadow, one image with more highlights, and this should probably play well throughout the whole range. So yeah, I mean, that's about it. That's 
it's a little that it's it's pretty simple i mean if you think about it just understand very simply and very briefly of course uh that editing is not everything you have to also understand that you have to shoot the image in a particular way and shoot the image in a way that you know how you want to edit it only then you can actually get the right results in the editing otherwise you won't really have a direction to go on so yeah that's my edit for this image and you'll be able to see the full set on my instagram profile that i'm going to share shamelessly right now <laughs> follow me on instagram hey you you follow me on instagram you also follow me on instagram yeah all right cool so now that everyone has followed me on instagram great i like having these two places to talk to it's like i'm talking to more people so it feels more lively like i'm not doing this to myself uh alone in like loneliness but it feels like i have a crowd it's nice anyways hope you like this video hope you had uh, some sort of an interesting way to comprehend what i did and if you liked it you can incorporate it don't try to do the exact edit on your image because it may or may not work it just depends on how the image is taken just keep in mind the things that i actually did throughout the image but the process basically there's observation execution and validation and take a break yeah take a break taking that break makes you and really helps you understand whether or not your edit works and so it's important but anyways that's about it that's it from me i hope you guys like this really long video i kept it as unedited as i could so that you could understand the exact process and the exact procedure that i take from scratch to finish and that was the point of the video so yeah you can basically leave a comment if you think that something that i said or did was not the right way to do it or if there is another way that you guys do please let me know in the comment space below and uh, yeah i mean like i mean share this and subscribe and all that jazz but more than actually doing all those things just out of you know theek kar le de yaar do it because you really want to do it and uh, if you have genuinely and honestly learned something Of course let me know in the comments space below there's more editing videos coming through hope you guys like this video i'm going to catch you in the next one until then wink differently see ya